a little bit more housekeeping to do. To fire safety. We, we need more resources. Teenagers tend to be more impulsive. Is it something that the family is capable of? Is there a fire? No, you live in. We've used accumulation. on antidepressants program. I want to extend a really special welcome uh, to people here today who have themselves experienced uh, hoarding and squalor. We have to do better, but it's not just government, it's everyone. There has to be a broader understanding as to what might drive squalor and hoarding. Three years ago, we were just like any other community services organisation. We were struggling to deal with the challenges of providing services to people who were living in squalor and who were hoarders. Since that time, we have been absolutely overwhelmed with demand from other agencies, councils, fire brigade, RSPCA, lots of other agencies in the community who want support, advice, assistance in how to deal with this complex issue. The comment that there's um, lots of questions still and very few answers is a, a reflects exactly the situation that we're in in relation to squalor and hoarding. We hosted the first national squalor conference in 2009 and since that time it's been obvious to us that an, a second conference was needed that's being held today in 2012. There's over 450 people here in a very diverse group of people. Hoarding and squalor is a very serious problem. It's a serious problem for the individual, it's a serious problem for neighbourhoods, it's a serious problem for council, there's a, an enormous fire risk. The risk status for people living in a hoarding property is, is extremely high. They represented nearly a quarter of all fatalities in the period between 1999 and 2009 in what fire services would call preventable residential fire fatalities. It's very inspiring to see the um, organisation, the level of engagement of all of the participants here and the commitment to working on this issue and, and to bringing people together and it seems like there's some great momentum that's been built from the conference. We've discovered that there's a whole range of issues that cause hoarding and squalor to be a problem in people's lives. All age groups, all socioeconomic status, all over Australia. We predict there are something like one million people who are living with hoarding and squalor. Genuine steps are being taken. There was extensive media coverage of the conference over the last couple of days and that to me indicates there's still a huge amount of interest in this uh, topic. People are wanting to know what services are available how to access those services and what are the causes and the solutions to this the huge problem. The pushing for hoarding to be recognised as a clinical condition. It isn't living. Um, it isn't living at all. Living with hoarding is, is living in despair. I hold on to objects to try and feel safe but I, I understand they actually don't help me to feel safe. But as soon as I try and sort through the objects, as soon as I try and discard things, the despair that it leaves me in is more than I can cope with. MFB responded to a fire in a fairly middle-class suburb to a unit. The hoarding in that property was up to about waist height and that woman was deeply embarrassed having come home from work to find um, her life exposed because she actually worked as the local pharmacist. Her apartment didn't really have a functioning bedroom or kitchen left. There was a large um, wasp nest on the roof the size of an old rubbish bin lid above the area where she slept. Um, and that's what happens. Functional capacity in those homes disappears. You can't let anybody come in and see it to repair things or to help you because they'll see how you actually live. I can't live in my house so I'm at the moment staying in a backpacker's place. I have been starving myself to pay both my rent in my house and accommodation. I wake up every day with this terrible fear that the next step is on the streets, it's awful. What I would like to see coming out of this conference is ways in which we collectively can become better at ensuring that it never gets to the point where local government needs to get involved at a legislative level and that these people are actually able to live in their own homes with a degree of quality of life. Hoarding for the RSPCA is a, is a huge issue and that's demonstrated by the fact that for the second conference we are the, the major sponsor. Two or three times a month we would, uh, we would get calls from the public concerned about people that are in charge of or own sometimes 
tens of animals and sometimes hundreds of animals on many occasions. And this is the irony for the RSPCA. They do genuinely love these animals. It's a moral dilemma for our inspectors as to whose welfare comes first. Is it the humans or indeed is it the animals? There, there are a myriad of ways in which the new technologies could be used. And We're here to learn. We're here to, to understand the bigger issue. It's not just about the animals. We, we understand that. We get that. We want to be part of the solution uh, as well on this, on this really complex issue. It's about trust. It's, and you may have to go back to that person um, several times. They might close the door in your face. But you just keep going back and hope that you gain that trust. This conference has handled delicate and ethical issues very well in my view. It's tried not to rescue people from their own dilemmas. It's tried to emphasise that you just can't go in with a skip and put everybody's junk in it. It's tried to emphasise the dilemmas of working with children and where there's animals involved. So of all things I think this conference has been able to juggle and to manage those difficult issues really effectively. Integral to effectiveness at Catholic Community Services is our partnerships with Graham Halliday, John Snowden and Jessica Grisham who have been integral to helping us build our expertise. I am optimistic that very good things will come from this conference. I have a passion to do something for those people who really don't get enough resources and I'm talking not just about the people who live in squalid situations or who hoard a lot but also their relatives, the people affected by it and by the service organisers, people who have to go in and don't get enough help and support in dealing with the problems. This conference is probably helping us form, as it says, a pathway through the maze. Maybe this isn't a huge, broad highway pathway, but maybe this is more of a goat path, more of a little pathway where we're starting to get more connections going, starting to get more concrete plans and solutions. Catholic Community Services is very committed to ensuring we take the energy from this conference and we go forward and we mobilise governments to develop a national strategy and response to this issue and we are going to be supported by everyone else in this room because they're just as committed and passionate as we are.